So we take advanced custom fields, the Elementor Pro 2 templating system and WooCommerce, we have a great platform for creating more unique online stores. And in this video, I just wanna demonstrate how we can use those three tools together to create something just a little more unique. So if this interests you, stick around because I think you're gonna really enjoy what we cover in this video. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon below to become part of the notification squad. Okay, so if you've ever fancied taking WooCommerce just that one step further and adding your own custom information in, you may have thought, well, how would I do it? Now, while WooCommerce gives us some control, there's a more flexible way and that's using advanced custom fields. In this video, I wanna demonstrate how easy it is to start using advanced custom fields with WooCommerce and then combining everything into a custom template with the ability of using Elementor Pro 2.0's template builder. So hopefully what you'll find by the end of this video is you'll have a good understanding of how to use these three tools in conjunction to create something just a little bit more unique, a little bit more bespoke. So let's just jump over into WordPress, open up the dashboard and take a look at how we start working with these three tools. So to follow along with this video, you're gonna to need to make sure you've got a couple of things downloaded and installed into your WordPress. First of all, you need advanced custom fields. Now this can be the free version for this example, but if you want to take advantage of all the extra things, there is a pro pack available that gives you extra features you can use. Alongside that, we need to make sure that we've got WooCommerce downloaded and installed and the basic setup done. You can just use the wizard on that. and I've got videos on the channel that'll take you step by step through. But for this demonstration, I'm not too worried about how you do that, just that so you have it installed. Also, you're going to need to make sure you've got Elementor Pro 2.0 at least, or whatever the latest version of version 2 is that is available, so we can tap into the templating system. Other than that, we pretty much are good to go. Now, for this example, I've just already gone through and installed OceanWP as the theme I want to use, and one of the predefined layouts that's WooCommerce-centric to make sure that we've got a good starting point. And this is what you can see. This is a product page. So you can see it's a custom layout, and we're going to kind of override that. We're going to create our own custom layout, but we're going to use the information that's already been set up as part of this particular template. Okay, so we're pretty much good to go. First thing we need to do is jump over into our dashboard and we've come down to the field group which is part of custom fields. So once we've done that we can now go through and create the first setup for the fields themselves. So we're going to click on add new. What we're going to do is we're going to put in here we're going to put custom product details. Now you can name this whatever you want. This isn't particularly important from my example. This is more a case of just a sample. Obviously when you do this, make sure you name it something that's gonna be sort of representative of the content you're going to put in. Now once we've done that, the next thing we wanna look at is the actual location rules. We'll come back in a moment to creating the fields themselves, but the location rules specify when and where this information will be displayed inside uh, the admin section of WooCommerce itself. So the first thing we wanna do is tell it when and where we want to use it. So what we're going to do is we've got post type. You can see we can expand that out and we have a ton of different options available in there. And what we want to do is we want to choose the post type. Now, you might think, well, we're not dealing with posts, we're dealing with products, but products basically are a custom post type that have been set up as part of WooCommerce. So we take, choose post type is equal to, and then you see by default, it'll say post. We click and expand that out. When we've got WooCommerce in store, we now have additional options available for the, the sort of rules we can use. So we're gonna say we want this to be applied to products. So this by default will now say any post type that is equal to a product show the fields that we want to create. And that's great if you want to apply it globally to every single product inside your WooCommerce store. But if you want to be a bit more specific, which is something that I want to do, I can set up a second rule which says that it also has to adhere to this second rule before this content will be displayed. So you click on and at the end, and you can see now this brings up post type is equal to again, and we have all the same options in there. This time we can choose a second rule that has to be sort of met, a second condition to work in conjunction with the first. And for this, we're gonna choose the post taxonomy. So we're gonna click on there, say is equal to, and you can see it says testimonies at the moment. Well, we don't want that. But now if we open that up, we have a lot of different options. And if we scroll through, you can see we've got all different kinds of things, tags, product visibility, product categories, product tags, and so on. So you can set this to whatever you think is relevant to you. But for me, for my particular example, I only want this to be applied to men's clothing. Anything that's outside the men's clothing category, when a product is inserted, will be ignored. It won't show these custom fields. So we're gonna say men's clothing, 
And that's the condition set up. We've now told it what we want it to do. It has to be a product and it has to be in the category of men's clothing. So there's what we need to do. If we scroll down to the settings now, we can go through and we can customize this. We can specify the position. We can put a description there. We can hide and toggle all the different kinds of pieces of information that are part of the actual post type in this example, the product. We can do what we want in there. I'm going to leave those as, as they are for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and add in a field. So this time we're going to come in and we're going to say, really simple, we're going to say product material. Go to the next field. You can see that automatically fills that out. Next up, we have the field type. Text is fine. We're going to leave that as is. And if we want to apply instructions, specify it's required and default values and so on, we can do that if we want to. We'll leave that as is for now. We can come back at any point if we want to and adjust and edit and add new fields in. It's very, very flexible when using advanced custom fields. So next up, we're going to come in and add another custom field in for the second custom element that we want. For this, we're just going to put product fit. Now, these are just examples. Like I say, it's just to give you an idea of how this works. Okay, so we've got, got that in there. Click in the next field. You can see it already pre-fills that out. Field type, we can leave that as text if you want. Or we can keep on going through this as much as we want until we get all the different elements that we want in there. I'm going to leave it at that. That's enough for what I want to do to start off with. The final thing I need to do is just go through and save this now. So we're going to come back up and we're going to go for publish because it's the first time we've made any kind of save for this. That's now added that in. So our field group is set up with the conditions we want to use and the different custom fields. So that's the first part. So let's just take a look now to make sure that everything is working the way we expect it to. Let's come into our product section and go to all our products. And once we go in there, you can see we have the first item is under music category as a test category. Everything else is underneath the men's clothing. So let's open up this ultra skinny fit suit, first of all, which is categorized under music, not under men's clothing. So click on there and we come in, you can see those custom fields are nowhere to be seen. We've just got the normal fields that we'd have, plus the Ocean WP settings section, which is specific to the theme that we're using. However, if we come back out of this, and we go back to all our products, and we open up a different one, which is in the men's clothing section, and we click to open that up, you can see we now have our custom product details. So product material and product fit. So they are in there. Now, if we just change this and take this out of men's clothing, just disable that, you can see they immediately disappear because the criteria that we set up hasn't been met. If we select music or uncategorized, then nothing will show up. But once we enable men's clothing, those custom fields will now show up. Okay, so let's just disable those. So we now know that that all works perfectly well, exactly as we want. Okay, so now that we've covered off using advanced custom fields, we've set the basics up, we're now going to move on to the templating system with Elementor Pro 2.0 and how we can set this up to start to display the custom fields that we've added in. It's very, very easy, but also incredibly powerful once you get used to it. So let's just open up the templating system and start building out our first template. What we're going to do is we're going to come down onto the left-hand side, we're going to come to Elementor and we're going to go to My Templates. Once we've got the My Template section, you can see any of the templates we have created will be listed. At the moment, there is only one. We can also then subcategorize them and filter them based upon all these different options, which are different types of templates. So we could go into Single Product, for example, and start working there, or we can click on Add New, and that'll do the same thing, just allow us to choose which particular type of template we want to work with. So let's go down that route. Let's just say Add New. You can see we can now choose the type of template and all these sections match exactly what you saw the different tabs in the previous screen. We're going to come down and say we want the single product. We're going to give this a name and we're going to say custom men's clothing. So we know exactly what this is going to relate to. Once we hit create template, that's going to take us to where we can go in and choose a predefined template that we want to, which we use as the base it and starts customizing it, or we can start from scratch completely. For ease of use, we're going to choose one of the predefined templates that are part of Elementor Pro 2.0. So I'm going to choose this first one. So you're going to click to add that in there. It'll show me a preview. Once I'm happy, I'll just click on insert. That'll load all the assets in and it's ready to start working. So you can see this is the layout that we're working with. So everything is pulled in into this predefined pre layout. Now, we've not seen any of the custom fields that we've just created. So we need to start adding those in. Now, obviously, if you wanted to, you could start completely from scratch and use any of the different widgets on the left hand side. And I've covered this in a previous video. So if you're unsure how to start working with this, check out that how to create custom pages with WooCommerce and Elementor Pro 2.0. That'll give you a good head start. But I'm just going to assume that you've already covered that and we're at this point now. Okay, so we've got the template set up. The next thing you want to do is start adding in our custom fields. 
Now, for this example, we're going to use this right-hand column. Now, you can see it's got things in there like single button blazer and so on. Let's just assume it didn't have that information in there, and we'll take a look at changing that later. What we need to do now is put in our custom fields, and it's very easy to do. If we come over to the left-hand side of the widgets, and we're going to close the product and the WooCommerce option. We're going to come into the basic section, and we're simply going to drag over a text editor. Position it where we want, which is going to be above the price. That will then just drop in some placeholder text, which we can very easily change. But what we're interested in is this dynamic option. And the dynam dynamic option will allow us to choose where we pull data from to display on the page. Once we click on that, you can see it pulls up a list of all the different pieces of information we can pull in. So you've got custom fields, and you've got post ID terms, and so on. If we scroll right the way down, you can see we've got ACF fields, which is our advanced custom fields. If we click on the ACF field, the very first option, you can see that pulls in the ACF fields option, but it doesn't actually show the fields that we want. If we click on the little wrench icon, you can see it now pulls up the key. Inside the key, we can expand that out, and any of the custom fields that we've created will now be listed for us to choose from. So the first one we've got is product material, then product fit. So we click on product material, we'll open up the advanced, and then we can put in some before and after text if you want, or a fallback option. So before, we're going to say product material I'm going to put a colon and a space after we'll leave that as is now you're going to see that nothing actually displays on the page and the reason for that is because currently we're looking at a product that doesn't have that particular information in there so how do we change that so we can view it it's very very easy if we go to the left hand side and we just click on the preview option you can see we have settings if we click on settings you can see that now brings up the preview settings and it's using the ultra skinny fit suit if we expand that out, we can now start typing in the actual page that we want or the actual post or product we want to use as the basis for our template building. So let's just put in the actual entry we want. So we want to use this slim fit tweed blazer. Click on there. Now we can click on apply and preview and that'll update and providing it meets the criteria and has some information there, we'll start to see it being displayed. So you can see product material 100% cotton. So we can now come in and we can duplicate this and we'll just do exactly that so we'll just say duplicate now obviously the second one is going to be an identical duplicate so we just need to make some changes to that so we're going to come to the ACF field for that one choose the key and say product fit and then just change the actual before and we'll just say product fit and there we go now the nice thing with this is we can also use HTML code in there if we want to so let's just expand that out you see at the moment product fit it doesn't really stand out very well so what we can do we can simply put in strong at the beginning and the end of that. And we now specify that's going to be in bold, whereas the slim fit, which is the actual text afterwards, comes out in normal font. And that's very, very easy to do. So now if we wanted to, we can create as many different custom fields as we want and then build those into our template system. So that's the template set up. Now, how do we apply it to only work on specific products? Well, let's take a look at that next. So now that we've created a template, the final thing we need to do to make sure this works in the right way is to set up the custom conditions that we want. Now, these custom conditions basically say when is the template going to be used and when is it not going to be used. The beauty of this is you can use it in two different ways. You can use it to only display your custom template when it's required and then fall back to the default template that's part of your theme or you can use it with multiple different conditions and you can have different templates for different parts of your WooCommerce site and then use different conditions to call them up at the relevant point. It's a very, very flexible system, but also incredibly powerful. So to create a condition for our template is very, very easy with Elementor Pro. All we need to do is come down and click on the publish button. Once you do that, it says, where do you want to display your particular template? So we click on add a condition you can see it says include all products. Well, this would apply it to every product, which is not what we wanted to do. So what we can do is we can click on there and we can say in a category, simply click on that. And you can see currently it says all. So we expand that out. We can now start typing what we want in there. So we know this is men's. So we start men's clothing and then select that. So there's the condition set up. Only display this template in the category when it matches men's clothing. You can also use exclude. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to, you had tons and tons of categories and you only wanted to apply this to a specific one. You could use exclude so it doesn't apply to anything other than that one. There's lots of ways you could use this. And if you want to, you can build up multiple conditions in the same way that you could do that when you're using advanced custom fields at the beginning. 
So once you get used to conditions, they're very, very easy to work with. Okay, so we've done the basics. Let's click on publish. And that's our new template created, ready for us to start working with that particular category. Okay, so now that everything is in place, let's take a look at this in action. Let's open up our test site and just take a look at how the template works and how it displays the custom information from advanced custom fields using our custom template with all those template conditions we've applied to it. So this is our demo site, and as you can see at the moment, we'll look at the ultra skinny fit suit. And as you can also see, it doesn't display the information that we've just set up as part of our template. The reason being is because this is assigned to a different category. This is assigned to the music category and not men's clothing. So if we simply come back up to our collection set in which we'll show all the different products we have, we can then go through and find the product that we know has these particular custom fields and this custom information applied to it. So we scroll down and we'll find there's our slim fit tweed blazer. So we click on there to go inside, and as you can see, if I scroll down, there's our custom field information inside the template. So those conditions are now working to make sure that it's displaying the information we want on the relevant section of our site, and anywhere that doesn't meet those criteria won't display those custom fields. Now, while this is a really simple example, you could take this way further and start to create much more complex pages that have custom fields for the relevant different sections to make sure that your e-commerce store with WooCommerce really is as flexible and as powerful as possible. Okay, so there we go. That's all the things I wanted to cover today. Hopefully what it's done is it's given you a great understanding in how you can use advanced custom fields in conjunction with the template system for Elementor Pro 2 and WooCommerce to create more bespoke, more unique websites for you or your client. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to become part of the notification squad and be notified every time new content is added. If you didn't enjoy the video, give it a thumbs down, but please let me know in the comment section why you didn't enjoy the video and why you didn't find it useful. Speaking of the comment section, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or what you'd like to see covered in future videos, again, please leave those in the comment section below. Well, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time... Take care.